but Right guys, so we're back today, Hampshire Spaniel training, and we're gonna be talking about dummies. Not me, these things. I'm gonna talk about how we hold them, how we throw them, how we want them to land, okay? And also the array of different dummies, and when and why I might use them. Isn't that right, Billy? So we're gonna put Billy away, and then we're gonna have a little chat. Come on. Right everyone, so thought we'd make a little video on some of the finer little details that I often find myself picking people up on in lessons and with my online clients. Before we get going, don't forget, if you're looking for help and support, whether you've got an eight week old puppy or you've got an older dog, go through to our Facebook page, send us a message on there and I can give you some more information on working directly with me through WhatsApp. Anyway, get that out of the way. Uh, we're going to talk about dummies first of all, how I tend to operate with them and then I'll talk about the different dummies uh, which I use and when I prefer to use them and for what tasks. So one of the best tips I give to everyone when I first start is before you put a retrieve out, always stop, think where you want the retrieve to land. I know it sounds really simple but loads of people don't do it. So if I'm doing a left or a right, I've got the dog sat up facing me, okay? And let's say the dog is a, a meter out from a fence, then I want to be sure that when I throw that retrieve to the left or the right, that that dummy is also a meter out from the fence. So before you just reach for your bag and throw your dummy, look where your dog is, look to the spot where you want your dummy to land, and then throw. I know it sounds ridiculous, but the amount of people just take a dummy out, throw it, and it lands all over the place. Saying that, even though when you are putting that retrieve out and you're doing your best to be as accurate as possible, sometimes the dummy will fall awkwardly. And if it's not within line of the dog or in the specific spot where you want it to be, don't be lazy, walk out, pick it up, put it down again. Because at the beginning of your training, it's really important, if, for example, left, rights and backs, as soon as the dog turns and it runs and it bumps into the retrieve. And if it lands awkwardly and lands into a bit of longer cover, the, might, the dog might give up before it gets chance and then you've ruined the drill that you're working on. So, tip, look where you want the dummy to land, take your dummy out and then throw it. Okay, that sort of leads on to the next part, which is how I hold my dummies. Again, sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people get this wrong, so I'm gonna try and show you up close. So for example, if I take my 150 gram rabbit dummy here, you can see that it's got a toggle on it. I'm gonna show you this up to close, uh, up close, sorry. Now, the best way to hold these to throw them, I see people doing all sorts of things. But what we're looking to do is with your two first fingers, you're looking to get the toggle balancing on the bend of your first two fingers. So not back here in the palm of your hand, but here at the front. And you want to grip with your thumb on top. If you have your toggle too far down your hand when you go to throw it, you'll find a lot of the time the release point will be very high and this is when the dog goes, uh, the retrieve goes up in the air and doesn't go anywhere. So put the toggle on your hands, have it as far down the tip of your fingers as you can, put your thumb on top of it and if you throw like that, your release point will be a lot better. So that paired with looking where you want the retrieve to land and I promise you, your throwing will improve. And I have so many lessons where people say, oh, my throwing's terrible. And those are two things I look at straight away, is how you hold the dummy, okay? Because that makes a massive difference. And also where you want it to land. Really, really good tips. If you start doing that, you'll improve everything you did. There's a lot of different things I could go into on this conversation, but I want to try and stay on topic. I'm a bit prone to like going off on a ramble about one thing and then not finishing my conversation. So I'm gonna try and stick to the, the point here. So always thinking about where you want your dummy to be, depending on what the drill is that you're doing. And again, that's a whole other uh, collection of conversations. And then also where you wanna land it. And remember at the beginning without getting too complicated, keep things simple. The next thing is going to lead on to what dummies I use. Now this is really, really important. You need to identify what it is that you're trying to get out of that drill that you're doing. 
Now, all my early base retrieving, or 90% of it, is going to be sight-based. And that's because I'm trying to get the dog to learn to take a command, for example, left or right or back. And as soon as that dog turns, whether it's 90 degrees or 180, I want the dog to see that retrieve and pick it. Also, with young dogs, I'm not wanting to make that retrieve difficult. I want that retrieve to be as simple as possible. If you overcomplicate it and you make it difficult for the dog to pick, the dog's going to be less successful. And when you're doing volume retrieves, you want them to be easy as possible. So this leads on. So I normally start off with my puppy dummy. So I'll get a puppy dummy out. So this is my 30 gram puppy dummy. It's super light. You can even roll it into a ball. And this is what you'll see me using in a lot of my early videos. And the point of this is it's super soft, really engaging. The dog's like holding it and it's one of the best things that I've found to use. Um, all these are made for me in the UK. So that's my puppy dummy. This is just for short range work. It stands out, it's easy for them to pick, no nonsense. It's not meant to make the retrieve difficult and it's fun and engaging. The next retrieve, I'm gonna talk about different things and when I'm gonna use them. So I guess the ball, the rabbit ball, so these are natural rabbit balls. Again, I'll be using these but these are become slightly less visual oriented and become more about the hunt. So I'm gonna talk about those in a second. You've got your next dummies now. So these are all ones that I have custom made. They're for me, you can't buy them in the shops because they're made specifically for me. These two look very similar. That's about 115 grams and this one's about 150. This is a bit larger and I tend to use this for the majority of my volume retrieving. So you'll see in a lot of my early videos when I'm doing left, rights and backs. This is the dummy I tend to uh, prefer once I've got a dog retrieving relatively well. Um, so I'm probably using these from three and a half, four months onwards if the dog has a good hold. I do a slightly smaller version now. These ones I use because these throw really well. They're more compact, although they're lighter, these are like a little projectile. So if I am wanting to throw a retrieve that the dog's got to travel for, and then hunt an area out, because when these all get damp, they get much harder to find, is in look-wise. Um, the scent gets better, but they become harder to find. So if I want to make a retrieve where I'm sending the dog a long way, and then it's got a hunt an area out, that's the type that I'm using, especially if I need to throw it. Because as I said, with the toggle on, those fly a decent distance, even though they are lighter than these. The 150 gram ones, this is where you'll see me doing all my, as I said, my volume work, left, right, back, left, right, back, when I'm doing lots and lots of retrieving, really soft, um, again, not heavy, and the dogs are really engaged in picking those up. So you always got to think, what am I trying to achieve? In my early stage, if you watch any of my blog series, it's always going to be turning the dog left, right, back, the dog seeing the retrieve and picking it. I don't want it to be any more base than that. These high -vis water dummies, hence water dummy, I use them a lot when I'm doing water work, but I also find they're quite good if I want to do quite long retrieves, but I want the retrieve to still be visual. So there's times when I'm pushing the distance on a dog on a retrieve, and I know it might get two thirds of the way out and it's starting to hesitate. If that retrieve is visual based, it can be enough to spur the dog on to finish that longer retrieve and then pick it. So you're taking away the element of hunting for the retrieve at the end, but it engages the dog to keep running. If after I've used that for some time and I've got that dog's confidence up and it's happy to run a decent distance and get it out to the area, then I might go back down to that smaller one of these two where these are harder to find, so they're more scent orientated. So if I want to make a retrieve harder in distance, but easier to find, then I'm gonna use a dummy like that. If I'm doing volume retrieving, I'm using these softer, lighter types. If it's a retrieve at distance, I use this type. So this is the 120, that's the 150. Um, I've also, as I already said, so I've also got the rabbit skin ball. Um, I use these a lot in my hunting. So if I'm doing a hunting task, this is brand new. So it looks all fluffy. Once this gets a bit damp and you've used it a few times, they go much more abstract, much more difficult for the dog to find and see, and they become more about the scent. So if I'm putting retrieves down and I don't want the dog to find them, then this is what I'm starting to use. I also do a mini version of this, which is a mini tennis ball. It's about half the size of that. So that looks about a third smaller once it's wet. 
Um, I have some that are brighter colors like this. I have some that are more natural. And again, it depends on what I'm trying to achieve. But most of the time, once these get a bit grubby, they get nice and dirty. The more you use them, the better they get, I feel. But again, if I'm trying to get a dog to hunt an area out, so it's less about the visual and more about the nose, then that's when I'm tending to use this. Also sometimes paired with the puppy dummy, which I can roll up. So the puppy dummies, they're so soft, you can actually roll them up like this and put an elastic band around them, and then you've also got a ball. So those combined with the balls, those are the ones that I'm putting down for the dogs to have to hunt and find. So basically what I'm trying to say is like trying to choose your tool for your drill. So if you're working on the handling work and you're doing volume and you want the dog to be, uh, the trees to be seen, then I'm using normally that, the 150 gram rabbit dummies, which you'll see me using. I don't really ever use cameras dummies. Lots of people do, but personally for me, I just use rabbit dummies because I find they're the most engaging. And at the end of the day, I just want something the dog likes and picks uh, with no hassle. So the majority of my handling work, I'm using the rabbit dummies. If I'm doing long range retrieves, but I want them to be visual, I'm using the water ones. If I'm doing long range ones, uh, I use the 120 gram rabbit dummy, so they fly a long way, but they're harder to find. And then if I'm just doing hump work, then I'm using either the puppy dummy rolled up or the rabbit ball. So hopefully I've explained the different array of dummies there and what I use them from. There are some other dummies that I use. So I have some big rabbit dummies and I use pheasant pelts around some of the bigger dummies, but I don't use those so much. They tend to come more at the end. So the volume amount, sorry, the main volume of my training in the early stages He's using that collection of dummies. Anyway, I hope this video has been some use. Don't forget to subscribe and like, guys. Any questions, sit them down in the description below. Otherwise, happy training.